Hi guys, it's Sheila. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're unboxing the DJI RSC2. I am upgrading from the SC to the RSC2. Um, I took it out of here to charge it for a bit, but other than that, I haven't really played with it or opened it or anything. So this is a box that it comes with. Um, my Ronin SC, I'm gonna make a, like a separate video just comparing the two of them, but basically this is the box that it comes. So when we open it up, it has these uh, this foam protector right here. So I'm gonna take that out. Um, it has the quick start guide and the menus as you can see here So I'm gonna get to that in a second. I'll probably read this thoroughly tonight, but here is our gimbal I am so excited for this um, as you can see it packs down really nicely um, You cannot take it apart like the SC, but it's just one big um, Part that kind of falls. I am super excited I think it's like so much better. It's definitely, I can already feel the weight, <laughs> but I like it. Also, one of the main differences is that it has a screen so you don't have to go into your phone to change all the settings. Okay, so it brings the actual Ronin. Um, and we have this bigger plate right here, as you can see. And then we have the charging cable, which doesn't bring a connection to the wall, it's just USB but that seems to be the thing now where they don't send you like an actual connection to the wall. And then it has uh, a couple plugs depending on which camera body you're using. I shoot Canon, so I'll probably only be using the USB-C here to USB-C. And it also has this plate right here. I'm not sure what this is yet. Um, we'll find out. I think, actually, I think this is what attaches to the camera and then, oh, it's just a separate plate. Okay, so you have, one that is a little taller and bigger in case you need to the camera to be a little taller and then we have this one the nice thing about this gimbal is that it has the mounting plate already set up so you can just take your camera out of there whenever you need it to but i like to use the pick design um mounting plate so i don't know if i'll be using this one or just mounting i don't know maybe i'll have to figure that out <laughs> i had everything working for me with the sc so it's gonna have to take some um changing and rearranging of things. And then it also has the plate so you can put your gimbal down. This one seems a little bit bigger and just more sturdy than the SC. It's definitely longer. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything that comes in this box. It has the little um, screw for the longer lenses or bigger lenses so you can, so they can stay in place. And it has a little bit of extra um, stuff in case you need it. So. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. The first thing I'm going to do is obviously unfold it. So it has this little wheel, turning wheel here that says unlock and lock. So I'm gonna turn it all the way left, which is already, okay, for the purpose of this video, I'm locking it all the way. And then I'm unlocking all the way left. And then this actually feels like you're actually going to break <laughs> the gimbal a little bit, but you have to push. And don't be afraid to push. You're not going to break it as long as this is unlocked. But it took me a minute. I wasn't sure if that was the correct thing to do just because, you know, I'm not super strong. So it took a lot of strength for me to do that. And then you go ahead and just lock it right here so it stays in place. Um, the rest of it, it has little unlock and lock buttons. These are, are a lot better than the ones on the SC. I found that those got stuck sometimes. It did slow down my workload, believe it or not, because I do work a lot of weddings um, and just having it stuck in a, like in a moment that I needed to just turn my gimbal on and go. <laughs> and I was stuck there trying to like unlock it and lock it. Um, ooh, you now have like a dancing gimbal. Okay, so I'm gonna put the mounting plate on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and screw that on. It does not have two different screws like the Ronin does, but I don't think, I mean, in the amount of time that I've had it, I haven't used anything different than the, than the one that it brought. So I'm gonna put it on the floor right here. Um, the grip feels really nice. That is something that I did complain about the Ronin. It just feels like you have a lot more, like my hand just fits better there. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. So to turn it on, you just press the power button right here. You just press and it starts saying DJI. Okay, it went into sleep mode, that's fine. So I think it's kind of nice that it brings uh, this little screws so you can attach the mounting plate. So I'm going to go ahead and so this is the mounting, 
This is a mounting screw that it brings and this little screw. So I'm attaching that there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the back of my camera. Okay, I guess it's still out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the gimbal. For this, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna turn it all the way off. It is not, I would not recommend balancing your gimbal while it's on, especially um, if you're going to lock the arms. So to enter the camera, we have this little lever here. We're gonna put it all the way unlocked. So this is the way it goes. The camera goes here, the lens goes on this area right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach it. I have it unlocked. And then, okay, it seems like it only goes one way. There we go. So you have to put it from left to right. And then you go ahead and lock this lever. And then we're going to go this way, backwards. Okay, so it says that this one has to be unlocked for it to go in. I'm also gonna go ahead and put the little um, thing for the lens. So I have that. Now it's saying that if I unlock that side and bring it in, it should probably work. Except it gets stuck there. Okay, so it has to be all the way unlocked for it to work. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. This one feels a little stiff. It seems like you have to lock it all the way, right? Maybe I have to hit the gym, I don't know. Okay, so now I'm gonna go, <laughs> go ahead and start uh, balancing. It seems like they have it um, further out than I do. Yeah, they definitely have it further out than I do. Okay, I'm trying to unlock it and bring it all the way back. It seems like you hit a little bit of a rock spot in the center, don't be afraid to bring it backwards and then lock it again. Okay, so now I'm unlocking this side. It is falling forward. So now I know that I have to move it even further back until it doesn't fall anymore. And that seems pretty balanced to me. Okay, so I'm locking this one and then I am going to Unlock, where are the other ones, jeez. Okay, so it's right here, under. And it's weird because instead of it going sideways, it goes up and down. Um, it's kind of hard to like show you this, but. Okay, so it's tilting this way. So I want to unlock the lever and bring it outwards a little. Seems like it's still tilting, so just a little further up. Okay, that seems fine to me. Opening up the running app. I already have it connected, but if you don't, you just click here. It would say connect. Do you find your um, Ronin? You press on it, and then you log in to your account. It's fairly easy, so now I'm locking all the axes. So I have one. Uh-oh, not a good sign already. It's probably because I moved it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move it back. Nope, too far. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so it's on, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the app and do the balance text, test, and it says to incline. So that's what I'm doing. See how bad of a job we did? Okay, so the tilt is excellent. The pan and the roll need a little bit of work and I can already see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. I'm gonna lock my tilt here. Okay, and then I'm gonna lock the, that one and I'm gonna move this forward probably like to five. Tilt, excellent, pan and the roll. So I'm gonna move this down to maybe one. And then I'm, I'm, I'm gonna unlock it. 
see how that feels. That doesn't feel horrible. Maybe a little bit. So I'm gonna move it forward just a little bit. <laughs> you just have to be really careful when you like unlock things because any sudden movement can make a lot of difference. So far I'm not having any issues unlocking any of them except the tilt. I feel like that is in such an awkward spot and the button is so small. Okay, there it is. It gets a little annoying to just turn it on and off. I will say that. But like I said before, it's just, it takes a little bit of practice. Um, and it's just difficult. Like balancing a gimbal is just difficult. There's no other way to say it. Okay, it's excellent. We got three excellents here. Here's some proof <laughs> that I'm not lying. We have different levers. We have um, this one right here, which attaches the camera onto the gimbal. We have this one here that moves it forward and backwards. And then we have the bottom one that moves it left to right, which is really cool that they separated these two. Um, that's something that I didn't have before. If you want to adjust your pan, you have to um, unscrew this little wheel right here. Then you have this one for the tilt, which is here. And then you have another one here for the roll, which is kind of cool. All the little wheels have their own unlock and lock. So the tilt is here. Um, you lock it down, you unlock it upwards. The pan is on this side. And then we have one um, here for the roll. So the only one that is in an awkward spot, I would say is this one right here on the tilt. Other than that, I think the gimbal is kind of nice. It feels very sturdy. Um, it feels like it has a lot more weight, especially here on this area than the Ronin. So I like that. We have this one right here, which has a, like a return symbol. I'm not sure what that means yet. Um, and then we have the power button on this side, which you press. Over here, we have the little screen, the wheel, which feels a lot better, just like the movement and the grip of it just feels better. We have the um, mode button and then we have the record. So super easy. Um, when you want to charge your battery, you're gonna plug your USB-C right here, even though the plugs for the actual camera are over here. We have a little focus wheel here, which is kind of nice. That's something new for me. And then if you have pressed this, it's supposed to just go back to the um, original position. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. So I'm pressing. So we're gonna do gimbal, then camera. So I'm turning on the camera. And then now we should be good. So now I'm gonna try to change the modes. I am not sure how to do that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got it. So this little wheel here is actually your button as well to select anything. So I'm going to go onto advance. So I select. Should probably be showing you what this looks like. Okay, so we have this little wheel here. If you move up and down, it selects everything, but if you want to select one of them, you just press on that. So this oval selfie, I think I want to leave it on off. Horizontal calibration, gimbal auto check, push mode. So for now, I like these settings. I'm just going to press the M, see if it goes back. Okay. I'm not sure where I was now um, and how to go. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna press the return button, then move towards follow, auto tune. I'll press on that, so I'm pressing on the actual wheel. Then we're gonna do super smooth, off stiffness, and start. So I'm gonna press on start, and it's going to calibrate for me. You always want to calibrate when you know the gimbal is um, perfectly balanced. It made a noise. Do you guys hear that? Don't know what that meant. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to run through the menu. So we have follow, auto tune, joystick, front dial, advanced. So let me check on advanced. That's where I was before. So follow. Pressing on that mode, PTF. So I think that's where I want to change. I want to do 
FPV or I think I'm going to leave it on FPV. Yep, that sounds right. So FPV, then I'm going to go back, speed medium, that's fine. Okay, so we are outside. I am testing the Ronin and it actually feels pretty good. It's a little bit, actually not a little bit, it's a lot heavier than the Ronin SC because I also have um, the R6 on it, the 50mm 1.2 and the actual Ronin itself. So it is a little heavier. I don't know if I want to keep the SC at this point um, just for when I need like less weight. I don't see the point of carrying more weight when you're with a really compact and small setup, but it feels really good. Um, yeah, it feels really good. So I have it on the mode one is pan follow and tilt, mode two pan follow, and the three it's the 360. So I'm going to go ahead and I have it on the one now. So I'm going to move to the three. Sorry, I had it on the two. Move to the three and you can see how I did the 360. I can turn it around and to go back, I just press this twice, goes back onto the normal one. And then to go back to mode one, I go back into my M and just press it once. So it feels good. Honestly, it's uh, panning, responding how I want it to. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, it is very similar as the SC. So you press and hold this right here and you can go into slung mode. Um, and then as you're holding it, it locks it. I don't see any jitter or shake, which uh, was one of the things that I like complained the most with the, uh, with the SC. Back to the normal. Okay, cool. So as you can see, I'm gonna do it right here. So there's no shake and it stays. And as I press this right here, like if I don't press it, so it's just like floating around. But if I press it, you're going to see how it stays, stays put, which is kind of cool. If you're like, I have my dog right here. So if I want to film him like this, I can do it and still maintain like a really, <laughs> oops, like a very, um, just straight footage and, uh, not shaky. So that's the goal, right? I love how it looks. Um, I love the weight. I think it's going to be a little bit more like a little heavy on my wrist. Like if you're a woman and you're looking for a gimbal, I have very just like flimsy wrists. I don't know. <laughs> I can take a lot of weight with my arms. Like my arms don't feel tired, but my wrists kill me. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, we're going to see. I don't know if I can like make it out eight hours with this gimbal. Uh, sometimes I need to. So that's why I say like, maybe I'll just stay with both gimbals and use them when I need it. But I just also like, don't feel like wasting money and I don't want to see it sitting around if I'm just going to use this one. I also don't know why to put the Ronin name so big. Like we get it. <laughs> we absolutely get it. It's a DJI. Um, I also didn't mention it earlier when you press it three times, it does a selfie mode, so it turns around and films you, which is kind of cool. Um, and then you can also like make it follow you if you have the aptic track. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't think you can get the active track on this gimbal if you don't have the Raven Eye, I believe. But on the SC, I'm pretty sure you can have it if you have uh, if you have it connected to your phone, which I never use that to be honest with you. Also wanted to bring Theo in here since he's like so famous in my channel. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? He's cute. How do you like it? Do you like it? Do you prefer the other one? I know what you do. He likes the SC. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry that I wasn't more help. I'm just trying to like figure out myself um, on how to work the gimbal and you know everything. But I really like the fact that it folds up onto very small um, gimbal and it, I can fit it on my bags. I also love the fact that it has this wheel right here. It's super easy to, uh, believe it or not, that was super easy to balance for me because I'm used to like struggling with the Ronin. And even if I put a very small camera, like a mirrorless camera like the R6, um, with a 50 millimeter 1.8, it will freak out at some point. And um, this just feels like way better. It's definitely way heavier. I am already feeling 
the weight and the difference. I'm gonna have to hold it with two hands at all times uh, just because I'm very small, but I, I like it. I feel like it's a lot more um, professional if you ask me. Um, the Ronin SC, I definitely recommend it as a run and gun um, just type of gimbal if you do a lot of, um, if you hike, if you do a lot of like outdoorsy stuff where you want to have just something in your bag that's not um, super big and bulky, that is definitely a good option. Um, and I would say if you are gonna choose that one, definitely have like a smaller setup, maybe like a Sony a7 II with like a very small lens. It's not gonna take any of the G Master lenses or you know any of the Canon L lenses. Um, but I did use the a7 II on it with the 28 to 70 that it brings uh, for a long time and it was a great lens, it balanced perfectly. Yeah, so hopefully I can come back with more information for you guys. <laughs> Um, but thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are looking to buy the Ronin S RSC2, then definitely go for it. See you guys in my next one. Bye.